Hello everyone, Haven here. I recently made a video about the Alliance Paladin Charger mount, as kind of a response to the new class mounts that are coming in 7.2. Now plenty of you seem to enjoy it, and I've gotten so many requests to do both the Blood Elf Paladin version of the Charger mount, but also the quest line for the Epic Warlock Steed. So basically, I thought we would finish up all the Paladin stuff in this video, and then we will cover the Dread Seed of Sauroth in the next. So without rambling on, let's dive into the obstacles that the Blood Elf Paladin had to undergo to unlock their Thalassian Charger. Enjoy! When the Paladin reached level 60, the Nightlord Blood Valor in Silvermoon would offer a very prestigious summoning. Before patch 2.4, the summoning would come from Lady Liadrin herself, and she would be the one that guided you through the questline. But after 2.4, this was instead changed to Lord Solonar Bloodwrath. This did however barely affect the questline at all, except a few pieces of dialogue here and there. And that was pretty much only changing the two characters' names. So, as I said, the Paladin's journey towards the Thalassian Charger began with a summoning from Night Lord Blood Valor. Your dedication to our order and advancement through the ranks has not gone unnoticed. In fact, Lord Solonar Bloodwrath, Lady Leadrin's right hand and a hero in his own right, has asked to speak with you. This is a rare honor. Normally, Lord Solonar leaves the management of the order's rank and file to me, but he has taken a personal interest in you. Do not tarry. Lore-wise, this summoning really was something special indeed. Among the Blood Knights, only a handful were ever deemed worthy to ride the Thalassian Chargers. Depending on the patch, Leadrin or Solonar explained this in detail to the Paladin. Within the ranks of our order, there exists an inner circle of elite knights. Members of the circle represent the most dedicated, skilled and trustworthy of all Blood Knights and are handpicked by the leadership. Most simply know the masters by their Thalassian Charger mounts. Each candidate for membership must have a sponsor within the circle and must demonstrate their dedication to the order's central tenets. I have chosen to sponsor you for standing as a Blood Knight Master, if this is your wish. After accepting the offer, the Paladin is given his first task to show his dedication to the order. This does however have nothing to do with your skills in battle. Instead, the Order is more interested in what's in your pockets. More specifically, they want the Paladin to bring a set of items to Magister Alastor Bloodsworn so that he can keep the Blood Knight Order supplied with the light energy they need for their magics. In total, the Magister needed 40 pieces of rune cloth, 6 Arcanite bars, 10 pieces of sun grass, 5 dark runes and 150 gold. This was very similar to the contribution that the Alliance Paladins had to give in their questline, but it was also one expansion later, so one can assume that it stung a lot less for many players. After the donation, the Paladin is asked to pick up his blade and defend his homeland. We Blood Knights are bound to defend Quel'Thalas. This is a central part of your training. Our enemies are fierce and unrelenting. Silvermoon and its people remain free by our efforts and the support of our allies. I have received some disturbing reports of a renewed Scourge presence southeast of our border with the Eastern Plaguelands. A company of Scourge siege engineers and their equipment appear to be staging an attack on the Ghostlands. They must not be permitted to succeed. After a short journey through the portal to the Eastern Plaguelands, the Paladin would indeed encounter the Scourge Engineers. The mission given was to slay 15 of these Engineers, as well as destroying 3 of their meat wagons. This was a task the Paladin could easily undertake by himself, and upon returning home, the sponsor, whether it be Leadrin or Solonar, praised your loyalty to your homeland and your dedication to the Order. Now. Only one task remains before the Paladin can earn the title of Master. 
Now, while the end of the Alliance questline revolves around redeeming a corrupted spirit, the Bloodle side instead consists of a three-part mission to send a message to the lesser paladins that the Blood Knights are the true wielders of the light and should not be trifled with. A Blood Knight master possesses incredible skill at wielding and weaving the light in a way that other so-called paladins can never comprehend. It doesn't stop them from despising us for unleashing the light's true potential. We must send them a message and show them that we are not to be trifled with. What I have in mind will be neither brief nor easy, but if you are committed, the first step will be to infiltrate the library wing of the Tears Hand Abbey and procure a vial of Tears Hand Holy Water. The reason this type of holy water is so important is because the twisted seal of the Scarlet Crusade that controlled Tears Hand has tainted and corrupted the water, which makes it perfect for the plans of the paladin sponsor. Now, the sponsor needed the paladin to gather four rare reagents, which would be mixed with the Tears Hand holy water. More specifically, you needed to find an arcane catalyst, crepuscular powder, an Azerothian diamond, and finally, a pristine black diamond. The first two items could be bought by vendors in or just outside Silvermoon, while the diamonds had to be farmed or bought from other players. Upon receiving all the ingredients, the sponsor reveals the plan and what kind of message will be sent. Ours is a true way of utilizing the light. To show others that would call themselves paladins the folly of their ways, I intend to send an unmistakable message. The Alonso's Chapel, where the Order of the Silver Hand was founded, seems immune to the destruction of Stratholme. The Chapel's eternal flame affords it the light's protection, but when you use this mixture to extinguish the flame, that protection will be no more. It will burn, and our dominion over the light will be proven to the world. To finish the task, the Paladin needed help from a few allies to venture into Stratholme. There, in the Alonso's Chapel, they would find the human paladin Aureus, who guarded the eternal flame. After extinguishing the flame with the mixture, you have to fight and kill Aureus. After that, the spirits of five paladins, all dressed in judgment armors, spawn outside the chapel and attack. Their names are Elmar the Vanquisher, Cathela the Seeker, Gregor the Justicar, Vicar Hieronymus and Nemas the Arbiter. It is only when these five are sent back to the grave that the paladin can deem his task done so that he may return to his sponsor. As he does, the sacred Alonso's chapel, where the Order of the Silver Hand was founded, burns down to nothing but a pile of ash. Upon returning home, the paladin is rewarded with the prize he had his eyes on from the start. Well done! All who would oppose us would do well to heed the warning you delivered. Our foes should know that they are in peril, from the lowest foot soldier to the mightiest hero. You have earned your place in the ranks of the masters. Your dedication and prowess serve as an example for all blood knights. As a symbol of your new status, I grant you the ability to summon and command the Thalassian Charger. And that is where the quest chain to get the Thalassian Charger ends. I hope you have enjoyed this look back to a quest chain that used to be available to players but has now been lost to history. It differed quite a bit from the Alliance side. They had to save and redeem a corrupted soul and free it from its agony, while the Bloodles desecrated one of the most holy grounds of the Order of the Silver Hand. But I am just here to tell a story, not judge the morality of it. If you did like the video though, please give it a thumbs up and leave all your thoughts and comments down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at Haven Games, and if you want more World of Warcraft from a different perspective, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and I will be back with another video as soon as I can. As always, an extra thank you to all my supporters on Patreon, I really mean it when I say that this channel would not be what it is without you. And with that I'm going to end the video, so until next time everyone, take care.